You're listening to Mount Hermeneutics, where three Marines give their perspective on God, faith, and spirituality with a heavy lean on the Divine Council worldview. This is not your grandma's Sunday school, nor is it always for the Christian faint of heart. Nothing about who we are or what we say make us experts. But you better believe we'll have a take, and perhaps it won't suck. For, for at least for 24 hours, we're not friends. <laughs> <laughs> at least a, 20, a bad take. maybe like 48. So Matt's wrong. It, 100%. I'll punch an alien in the face. Welcome to Mount Hermeneutics podcast. I'm Brian. We're going to talk about the Trinity again for Shocker. the third and hopefully final time. <laughs> it won't be the last Probably time. Probably not the final time. It, but it the, definitely won't be the last to time. To round out the series. <laughs> yeah. Stuff on the Trinity, part three. And uh, I'm I'm Andre. And uh, on this topic, I am the main heretic of this group. So 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 here I am. I'm going to talk about, talk about the Trinity um, I don't, I don't believe in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, right, right That's, to it. There, 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 there we go. So this is Matt, everybody. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, Dre, like I'll, I'm going to invoke my inner, uh, um, uh, Costanza, a little, little respect for the heretic, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I, I wouldn't say I'm quite the, 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 the sitting heretic, but we're, I'm definitely asking questions. And, uh, if you guys have listened to our last two episodes, Um, you're either getting a lot out of this or you're ready for us to move on to a new topic. But as you know, with the Trinity, it makes sense that it comes in threes. So here we go. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad we're talking about it because it's actually forced me to dig into um, a lot of early Christianity. What, what is it that they believed in? Uh, What's, what's the earliest text? How do I know that it is? And uh, you know, I had to look into lots of, lots of, uh, exegetical stuff to to right. see how it fits in context and nice word by the way and, uh, and it was it was fun man like it fun and, and taxing at the same time because as i got into it the more that i read the more i knew i didn't know <laughs> so so here i here i am kind of looking into more stuff falling down multiple rabbit holes which also became fun lots of ideas and topics for for future programming and and uh it, it's good stuff i think i have a, a better understanding of of kind of the, the the original view slash what the view was like for the first 300 years, meaning that there was lots of views. And, uh, and then I've, I've also, because if you've listened to the, to the show the, few, uh, the last few weeks, um, I'm not a Paul fan, but me and him are getting closer and closer. We're, uh, I, I I'm talking to my man and, and me and Paul are, we're seeing, we're seeing eye to eye. We have an understanding of each other anyway. So, I don't. I don't think he's. That warms my heart a little bit. Such a dick that that I that I used to think, and it, and I, I don't blame him. I don't. I don't think the fall of Christianity is is the great apostles' fault anymore. So, mm. sorry about that, Paul. Well, that was that was a lot yeah. to have put on him and then taken <laughs> so, off. But I'm sure Paul's yeah, yeah, very yeah, relieved yeah. to to know you feel that way. He is. He is. You know, <laughs> let me worry about the fight when I when I get up to the to the to the council. So, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So I mean. It's, it's been, it's, I agree, you know, I've, I've had my own questions, ideas, mine have been a little bit different, right? So I was raised Trinitarian. Um, so that's not as if the ideas or the concepts are new to me, the way I came into this. And I think I said this in the first episode on the Trinity or two episodes back, I've always struggled with it as a point of, you know, quoting, um, you know, I don't know if he actually said it, but it's always been attributed to him, to Einstein. If you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it that well. And most Trinitarian theologians, which is to say most Christian scholars, um, will tell you, oh, yeah, it's super simple. And I'm like, well, explain it to me. And then four hours later, you're still talking about it, right? It's like, right. well, that wasn't that simple if it's it taken that much time. That's kind of why we got into this. Um, I think you know, it's easy to, you know, be looking too hard for something or asking for too high of a, um, having too high of an expectation level or moving goalposts, all those kinds of things. Maybe we've done a little bit of that here. Uh, but I appreciate it. You know, the conversation, this is like, I did a lot, I did a pretty long preamble when we started the first episode, cause this is a touchy subject I get. Um, I hope we've done it justice up until this point. Um, and, hopefully we can kind of get through this a little more quickly tonight and then uh, we can move on to maybe a little more 
looser and jovial conversations that we might have <laughs> around some say, of this topic. And I know Brian's itching to talk, but you know, um, I'm pay- I'm usually pay- when I when I speak Bible. I really am joking. Like I'll put like modern language on things that dudes are saying and, and mess around. I'll add some curse words or whatever. And and, and for this topic, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm giving it the respect that it deserves and that I'm, that I'm being reverent, which is, was a difficult thing for me to do when, <laughs> when you're talking about talking about this stuff. Cause it's just my style. Right. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's funny that you, you talked about, you know, the, it should be easy to, to, to talk about what well, in, in my, limited research of what i've been doing it wasn't simple for them like that was that was the the topic of conversation how do we how do we treat this thing this this guy is he god is he not god and there was plenty of christians that believed that he wasn't um Hmm. and you know when you and when you talk about the high and the low christology that that was those were real discussions and arguments and that's what the nicene creed is all about right so you you have the first piece of the creed that talks about the father and then the longest section of the creed is the son and there's no coincidence why that's why that's the case because the son is where all of the the uh the disagreement came from i know the first couple episodes we talked about the holy spirit because that's where I think that's where Matt was hung up on the mm-hmm. on the Trinity, but the yeah. the Son is where is where the early Christians were hung up. I, 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 was, by by the up. way, Brian's grunt was not lost on me or anybody that heard that. Yeah. It was funny. Dre said, if I'm not mistaken, you said there's plenty of Christians that don't believe X, and Brian uh, went, yeah. mm. no, that, that didn't. There was a didn't. right, no, and I'm just that saying was, there uh, was this. There was a harumph that came out of this that, guy. That, no, that was that was a. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I think I'm sure we'll get into that some more as we as we get going. So, but, uh, Brian, to, I think you you kind of wanted to jump into this. You you kind of laid out a little bit of a structure of how to maybe guide us through this last bit of the conversation. You well, I it down. I have I, I yeah I would like to I'd like to respond to the your Einstein quote though. Um, C.S. <laughs> Lewis had a remark about how. Uh, if it, if it was something that we, that was easy to understand that ever, if everybody just automatically got, um, I would think it was something man made up. Like if, if this is a revelation from the God who created the universe, who is responsible for physics and DNA and the, the, the way of duality of light and all the, all the stuff we cannot wrap our heads around about the physical universe. And it's a revelation of, of, from, from him about himself if it made immediate sense, um, yeah, that's probably that's probably a big red flag that somebody made it up. This this is something people would just intuitively concoct, precisely because of all the problems that it created of, of understanding and agreement in the early church. Um, so there's that. But so, so can I respond to that? Sure. So that's fair, and I don't think with what I was trying to suggest wasn't suggesting that the topic should be simple it's the understanding of the topic is so there's a difference there i'm i'm cool with the idea being hyper complex let's be real um anything related to physics is really complex right like the the actual level of sophistication of how all that happens is is very complex but there's plenty of modern you know neil is a great example, right? He can explain things in pretty simple terms. He, he can make Joe Rogan understand how the tide works, right? Like that's, that's a pretty simple explanation that he does to do that. That's not to say that tide is simple, but Neil can dis- explain it. Are in you a talking manner- about Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I just, he's, he's Neil. Like your drinking buddies. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, duh. I, I mean, I could call him Dr. DeGrasse Tyson, if that makes you feel better, right? But, you know. I just wanted to make sure in, I... In, 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 in DGT or however, whatever his, his letters are. But yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But he can explain it simply, despite the, the system being complex. And that was kind of the bar that I was going into with something like the Trinity. Look, I there's other parts of, of theology that have complexity to them, but can it be explained relatively simply, right? It's just the Trinity. That seems to require like, you know, 
400 revolutions around the topic. And then you got to, you know, hold your right hand up in the air and stick your tongue out to the side and hop up and down and turn around and do the hokey pokey. And like, there's just a lot to it to explain it. Right. And I'm not, and again, I'm not trying to be flip about it. I'm saying it's a very complex thing. And that there's somebody listening right now going, no, Matt, you moron. It's real simple. One in the same, same in the one be done with it. It's like, well, hmm. I, I don't know who you've asked other other than myself. I mean, I think God is one in being and three in persons is a, a well. A that's very simple. But then to explain anything beyond that is where it's where it becomes a you know it becomes oh. Newtonian to try to explain. That's that's that was my only point. If, right. I mean, you you make that statement and somebody just says, "Oh, really?" As an How? example. As an Why? example, I, I so I, I forwarded you guys a, a clip. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to it or watch it, but it was um, it was it was Jordan. I'm just going to call him Jordan because <laughs> we're drinking buddies. Me and Jerry, uh, uh, Professor Peterson, um, and he was explaining to of all people, um, Russell Brand. Russell Brand, thanks, thanks, yeah. Jerry. Uh, the way he sees the relationship with God, and he does it so simply. Like, and it's a really complicated concept also. The whole story around, for those that are listening that didn't see the clip, is basically trying to explain to Russell Brand, who's an avowed atheist, you know, if God is all powerful and all being, why would he create us and then require us to come to him when he could just make us? Like, that's essentially the question, which I've heard a lot from atheists or non-believers, right? And, and Peterson just really explains it really succinctly in about 45 seconds, Right. So he can explain that topic in 45 seconds. I, I wish Peterson could come to wrap his head around the Trinity. Maybe maybe he's the guy that can give me the, the 45 second soundbite that makes it really simple to understand. But th- I, I can't help but believe that there's simple ways to explain very complex problems. So that's my only response. But I, I do get your point that I'm not suggesting that it should be easy. I just feel like there should be an easy way to explain it. That's more than just a picture that goes, see this three, one, one, three. There you go. Get out of here. Stop asking questions. Okay. So You're heretic. But what do you want beyond that? I want um I want somebody to show me through the biblical text that doesn't that so and I'm gonna say it out. I'm and I I kind of we've been having this conversation. So anybody that's listening to this new, we're jumping around because we've been doing this now for you know eight, nine collective hours. Um on and off air. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, the biblical basis for it, the Trinity, um, and by biblical basis, um, and I thought of this the other night, Brian. So I kind of have a, a response to your what you were talking about. We, we we're kind of having a disjointed conversation. This isn't really working well. But you want me to it, ask my framing question and then maybe go from yeah, there? Yeah. Or... Yeah. Do that because I don't think we're. Do- I don't think this is actually getting us through the conversation well. Okay, so you guys have asked me a few times, uh, well, why does it matter? Um, why, why is the Trinity such a big deal? Why do you have to believe that in order to be a Christian? And I, I think that's, at face value, that is a fair question. But I, but I, I also think when people ask that, I'm not, not necessarily you guys, maybe, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but maybe you guys, so I don't want to take words out of your mouth. If this, this is what you mean. But the suggestion is often, uh, you know, well, well, Trinitarians are just being just dogmatic and exclusive for insisting on this and, and that's, and they shouldn't. Um, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the case. And I think that, I think the question, why does it matter is better put to non-Trinitarians because imagine like a, like a, a big city mega church holding a, a, a Bible study that's open to the public and everybody's invited, uh, Roman Catholics, Calvinists, Arminians, Baptists, Presbyterians, Eastern Orthodox, the whole, the, every flavor of Christian is invited. Um, so of course, if those people show up, they're they're going to fight like cats and dogs over stuff like uh, immersion versus sprinkling baptism or infant baptism or transubstantiation or the role of priests and saints and all that stuff. All the all hey, the Brian, stuff that denominations hey, fight hey, about. What's hey, up? Um, I, I realized I said it the other day and we just kind of flew past it. What is transubstantiation? 
That, can can we get into that later? No, I'm for the for people that are listening that don't know what the word means. I think I don't well, think we should matter. throw out There's, big words like that without. Well, pretend without pretend I threw pretend I threw out some other doctrinal disagreement <laughs> among denominations. That's not really the point right now. The, 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 <laughs> is they're going to fight like cats and dogs over all of the things that divide denominations? But what they're not going to fight about is the Trinity. That's, that's kind of the default setting of, Christ, of Christianity. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's correct, but it is the default. That is what, if, you, if, you're, if you're going to, to any given church, no matter how different, they're, they're going to agree on the Trinity, um, even if it's, they fight like cats and dogs over all that other stuff. That's, that's amongst, the, the amongst, main, amongst mainline Christians. Amongst mainline Christians. Right. But the, and that's why but, we use that term for those well, that are non-mainline Christians, right? So, Dre, I don't know if you've heard but, that, that. But another a, observation. Differentiation before. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have. Okay. <clears throat> but another observation about this hypothetical ecumenical Bible study, if, if – if somebody wants to go, asks one of the organizers, well, uh, you know, I, okay, what, what Bible should I bring? Should I bring an, an NIV or an NET or an NASB or an NRSV? The person, the, the organizer is going to look at them like they have two heads. They're going to be like, well, well, I don't, I don't care. You know, whatever, whatever Bible you use. Unless they're a KGV only guy. If they're a yeah, KJV only guy, then it's not a question. Okay. But. But my point is, well, a KJV only guy could bring the KJV. Um, so that's that wouldn't be an issue. Um, but my point is, I assure you, we have listeners out there that are like, there is no other translation but the okay. King James. Okay. But the you point know, those it, guys exist. The, the point of it is the people, the people holding this Bible study for, for all of Christendom would not need, would not need to screen out the, the wrong Bibles at the door, just any Bible will do. Cause they all, there are differences, but they're not divided along denominational lines. They're divided along methodological lines. Like some, some translations do it word for word, others idea for idea, others kind of negotiate the, the best fit between the two, but you can get all that. You can get their methodology in the translator's preface. You can get variant readings in the, in the footnotes. That's not going to be an issue for the Bible study and it's not going to be a Bible study where the Trinity is the default. For, for any non-Trinitarian group, though, that's not the case. Jehovah's Witnesses have to use the, the, the New World Translation to support their, to support their theology. Uh, Mormons have to invent a whole different body of literature. N n both of those statements are, not, are incorrect. Okay, what, where am I wrong? You're wrong because first, Mormons use KJV. Okay. And but, number number two, Jehovah's Witnesses do not need their New World Translation to make their case. Okay, why do they have why do they have the New World Translation? Um, they just think it's different and better. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not Jehovah's Witness, by the way, but they don't they don't have to have it to make their case. In fact, I've done a lot of door to door <clears throat> as a Jehovah's Witness, and we read from from whoever's Bible is standing there. Okay, well. If you go to a Jehovah's Witness Bible study, are they yes. not using the New World Translation? They are, yes. Okay, so if you're but, if you but that join New the World church, Translation would not be invited into your hypothetical Bible study. Uh, they wouldn't screen it at the door, but okay, very if, well. If you're going off of that, and you're and you get into a discussion about the Trinity, you're going to come to different conclusions because there are certain key verses in the New World Translation that they change to to obscure the Trinity. John 1.1, 1, 1. The, okay. the New World Translation reads, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a lowercase God. And there's all kinds of stuff like that. This is all, but in Mormons, on the other hand, there's a whole like different body of literature. Lat Latter-day Saints. R right. Well, I don't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying you to be contentious about that, but, uh, well, but they're the point you know, is they, they have a they have a supplement that does back up the things that that they're saying about their theology, but their theology comes from the King James Version Bible. Well, that's that's arguable, but the How fact of the matter arguable? is, well, the uh, the idea that God began as a man on another planet and then became God, and that we all can become God, exalted beings like God and and become gods ourselves and in that sense 
You can't get that from the King James Bible. You can't get that from any mainline You also Bible. can't get that from the Book of Mormon. I don't know how they get it. Or, <laughs> okay, then. But, but, neither but do the, I, so I think we, we might want to move on. But but the, but the my point is, any, any non-Trinitarian group, in order to maintain this theology, they have to get away from the Bible or or replace the Bible somehow to, I, to maintain I, I, that theology. I, I understand your point and I respect it, but I don't agree. And I, like I, for example, I don't, what if it would, if there was like an Ebionite group that was still around? What about, what about, okay. What if they would, they would use the Bible. How do you know that? Well, Cause like, they used the Bible back then or they used scripture back then. They used Matthew, for example. Okay. Um, well, we don't know a lot about the Ebionites besides a few and, scant remarks. But so my, I'm not, I'm not, trying, to, I'm not is, trying to go down a rabbit hole of just Ebionites or people um, that we don't know. I'm just saying that even in the research that I'm about, that I, that I could talk right now, I didn't read anything crazy. I didn't go from other other translations or, or, <clears throat> or outside of the Bible. I'm reading the text. And if you don't bring the Trinitarian idea to the text, I'm not getting it out of the text is what I'm saying to you. So, yeah. Okay. So, so what I'm saying to you, and I'm just to frame my question is, okay, please. the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity is the default position of Christians. And you don't have, you don't, you don't need a, a special set of scriptures as Jehovah's Witnesses do, as Mormons do to maintain this belief system. So- oh. Or given as Andre that Bibbs the, does, like I don't, I don't, I don't know where you're going with this. Given that that is the, given that those two observations are the case, and you, we can quibble about that later. But my question is, why, why do you guys make an issue out of it? Like, why is, why is it important to to undermine and and challenge and and deny the Trinity? Oh, I, I think, I mean, I, I'll answer it first. I don't. It's not. That's not. That's not. That's not the way I'm coming at it. So I'm coming. So you got to remember, Dre and I are looking at this from a very different set of perspectives, right? Dre is non-Trinitarian, and he's trying to understand why. I am Trinitarian question mark, simply looking for the actual basis as to why I am quote unquote believe it, right? So for me, it's I look at the things that I'm told are Trinitarian in the Bible. And I use the, I just came up with this the other night. I, I was thinking about the second amendment relative to the constitution. The second amendment is enumerated in the constitution, right? It actually says the words about why we have the second amendment, the right to bear arms, et cetera. And yet roughly 50% of the U S population is hung up over the placement of a single uh, comma after the word militia. And questions whether or not we have the right to have weapons. That's a fact. That's not a question. That's a statement of fact. 50% of the U.S. is split on the Second Amendment. Even though it says the words, you should have this right. And it was added after the original book was written. I'm using the word book in place of, of the document. As a, oh, we forgot this shit. We need to add this back in because it's really important. There is no such enumerated placement of Trinitarian theology in the Bible. To my understanding, you have to already have a theological opinion and then go back and read the Bible recursively to extract Trinitarian doctrine. That doesn't mean it's wrong, by the way. I absolutely it, disagree with that, but I, I, will I understand that you disagree, it, but that's that's my position, right? Like Trinitarianism could and might and likely is 100% correct. Sorry, Dre. I think it probably is correct. <clears throat> I just so Brian, like I recall you and I having a conversation years ago, and it was some, went something to this effect. I'm going to use words very loosely. I'm going to put words on both of us because I'm trying to restate the conversation for this group. You and I were talking about um, uh, basically apologetics, right? And you were making a case for apologetics, and I was kind of poo-pooing apologetics. Was this after sushi and? I don't remember. Downtown it was it was a while ago, right? And I basically, think I that conversation. basically, you said to me, "Why are why do you believe in God? Why are you a Christian?" And I was like, "Well, because I believe this and that." And you were like, "Why?" And I was like, "What do you mean, why?" And you kept hammering on why, and you were making the case that it's vitally important for a person to understand 
theologically, you know, uh, conceptually, philosophically, whatever the ology was that you were using at the time, that a person has to actually understand why they believe in order for that belief to be valid and real and healthy and fruitful and blah, blah, blah. Right. Again, I'm hyper, I'm super hyper simplifying the conversation. And I I was pushing back on you at that point because I was like, you know, I, I believe like I was told to believe, I believe, I believe. Now I feel as if this conversation is wildly flipped. You're telling me I should simply believe the Trinity because all Christians believe in the Trinity. No, I didn't. And I'm, I never and said I'm that. asking. You actually just said that. You said I it's said important. That's the, it's I essential. Said that's the default, and it is the default, right? It's the default. And I'm saying, and you why said is Trinity the default? is Christianity, right? And I'm saying, yeah, why is it the that. default? Because to me, the default should be what you can actually exert and extract from the words simply, not having to go get a, a degree in theology, come back and read the Bible and go, oh, now I see the Trinity. It makes perfect sense now that I've had it beat into my head for four years and wrote papers on it and had to stay late in class and blah, blah, blah. That's how I see it. It's that hard to extract in words. I, I get it. it. says one verse in Matthew actually says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Cool. That doesn't mean that's the Trinity. It just says that's who you should be baptized okay. in. Right. Um, but I'll, but then it I talks can, about address that. It, we, we talk about Jesus pre-existing, maybe if he's the word. And I do believe that I'm not suggesting it's not true, but I'm saying it takes a an interpretive read to get that part from it. If Genesis simply said. God has always existed, he exists sing- singularly and in three parts, and he existed before time. And then in Genesis 2, he created the heavens and the earth. Like if it literally just said that, it would be a lot harder for me to have the position that I have. But there is not a verse that says the Trinity exists and here's why. So I go yeah, back I, to my I, constitutional I get, scholarship I get what, point. I get what you're saying. Right. Um, the Second Amendment says it is the right to bear arms. Right. I'm, I'm chomping at the bit to answer that. Okay, I'll shut but, up now. Um, also, I want to give I, Dre a chance, though. To, you know, I, I've also, in your, in your scenario... I, I've been to many a church. I've had many a theological conversation <clears throat> and and I wasn't hung up on that default. If you know what I'm saying. Like I've never I don't know how many I mean with you we've we've had the this type yeah. of conversation and that's fine, but I've never been like, you know, somebody talking about Jesus as Lord. I've never been like, hey, what do you mean by Lord? Is that lowercase Lord? Is that an uppercase? Does that mean Yahweh? Does that mean no? I've never I've never done that. I've just said okay. Right. Like that's never been the thing. So so by you framing the question, why does it matter to the non-Trinitarian? It, it doesn't. Like I I don't I don't think that it is a thing that's going to uh halt my salvation. I don't think it's a thing that's gonna halt yours. Um I, mm. I mean it, even even if it's the default, fine, I'm coming in as <laughs> as the outsider slash minority but there's plenty of things in a in a christian sermon or study or or conversation that's that's not gonna gonna get me to walk out of the room just because somebody believes that the godhead is the same as three separate persons that's that's not a that's not a deal breaker for me all right Matt, you back? Yep. I never went. Um, well, just to address your idea, your remarks about it not being explicitly enumerated. Um, yeah, sure. The, the the word Trinity is it's shorthand for the the doctrines that Christians do find in the Bible. I mean, if we if we break down what that shorthand for, there's there's one God. Um, there's God the Father who is exists for all eternity uh there is god the son who also exists for all eternity there is god the holy spirit who also exists for all eternity each is a distinct person each is fully god there are not three gods there are there is only one god no you don't find that specific list of of doctrines explicitly enumerated but you do find each one of those individual points Sometimes along with other points, you do find those things explicitly explicitly enumerated. Like you can, you know, for any given point, Jesus is God. 
you can find a, a there's a whole slew of passages that we could cite from the Old and the New Testament that would establish that. Um, that Jesus is distinct from the the second person is distinct from the Father. Same thing that all the all the verses about the angel of Yahweh being distinct from Yahweh. That all the all the verses where Jesus it speaks of himself or is spoken of as God, yet as distinct from the Father. Um, you find plenty of verses like that. You find plenty of verses about the Holy Spirit as distinct from God in the primary sense, but it's but also God. Uh, you find all of those all of those passages taken together they they present a picture they paint a picture of God and what God is like and how the the members of the Godhead relate to one another. The shorthand for that is the Trinity. And if you're if you're reading the Bible with any with any attention from beginning to end, that shows up all over the place. You don't have to bring it with you. You get that from the Bible. That's just what the that's just shorthand for that that collection that constellation of ideas that in order to make sense of what what appears there so well, i think i agree with most of that i don't i don't know that i see all of it so i don't want to go even i agree with most of that most of it yeah i mean yeah. most of it I, I, I mean i think probably 70 80 percent of it i'm like yeah absolutely no problem okay so um i don't the- see i don't see reference to I mean, we're rehashing the last couple of episodes. I don't see reference to the Holy Spirit pre-existing and existing forever. I see exist. I see proof of the Spirit being part of God, the well, Spirit not of God, part of God, but fully God, fully God. But I don't see exist. I don't see. I don't know of any time I've read anything about the Holy Spirit that talks about it existing in perpetuity, or he, about he it existed. pre-existing. He. Um. Well, if it's I, the I, Spirit of God. I mean, your spirit is you. I mean, if God pre God exists for all eternity. I mean, I, my point, like, is there a, is there a specific verse that addresses that exact question? I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there is. If there is, I don't know about it. But does it need to say that explicitly for that to be true? Um, if if it's the spirit I, of God we're talking about, and we know that's true of God. I, that's, I mean, again, that's that's the only thing that I'm hung up on with it. it. It's 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 the fact that it's not enumerated, it's not explicitly called out, and well, if A and B then C is true, um, do we have to show explicitly enumerated C? Can't I just show A and B? I mean, if you know for sure that if B then C. But to me, that's that's where the that's where the assumed or theologically what's, invented. What's part the of alternative? That. What do you mean? What's the alternative? Well, if if the Holy Spirit is not pre-existent, I mean, if the Holy Spirit is God, then by definition, He is pre-existent. Um, do you remember what I brought up at, uh, last week about the the verse in, in about the Passover? Um, about the, 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 um, the destroyer. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. So is the destroyer a different embodiment of God? Is that a fourth person? Why, why would he be? Because it's a different name that we've never heard before. Well, was it Jesus? Was it it, Jesus or was it it the spirit or was it God? Was it Yahweh or was it the spirit? Which one was it? Well, he, I, it's kind of a rhetorical being, question, by the well, way, but because it, I, but it's, it's not a fair it's question. Not a, well, it, but it's not, he, it's not a name. It's, a, it's describing his activity. It's just Is what it? he's doing. I mean, yeah? the, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, he's given a name or a, or a role. That's all. And that's supposed to be sufficient for his personage. Well, I, I mean, I, and I'm splitting hairs a little bit and I get that. And I'm, I'm being very <clears throat> specific and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, carving through this because that's how I, that's how it's being presented. And I'm not saying by you, like broadly, like I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm supposed to accept that when I read the spirit of the Lord means a person and the one or two times when, when Christ is talking about him and calls him the, I'm sorry, I forget the title the, he's given. The, the paraclete or the, the translated as the advocate, or the, advocate the helper or the comforter. Right, the advocate, yeah. The advocate's going to stay behind and he's going to help you and whatever, right? So that's that's supposedly 
the only time or the only couple of times that the Holy Spirit is given a, a, a personage, a, a, a standalone identity. Well, that's, that's, that's not true. Where else? Throughout the book of Acts, uh, throughout Paul's letters, uh, Peter's letters, um, throughout the, I mean, really throughout the Old Testament. I mean, he's, this, give, it, he's given personality. Yes. Yeah. You can grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to the prophet Ezekiel, said, this is what the Lord said. Uh, the Spirit okay. spoke okay. to Philip, um, told him to go talk to that Ethiopian eunuch. And then the Spirit took Philip away somewhere that where we Philip where had he... no idea where he was going, but he right. supernaturally okay. transported him. But okay. yeah, that is that that happens so, throughout. So but but then but then in this Passover verse, when it calls it the when it when it references the destroyer, we're supposed to just throw that away. And that was just one of the other three persons, and we don't know which. Well, does it uh, you're I mean, you're putting a lot of weight on something that uh, I'm, I'm not sure why that I'm not sure why you're putting so much weight on that. When, because I'm trying to say, is there maybe a fourth person to the Trinity? And because th th my problem with the Trinity is not the three parts. My problem is that a whole bunch of people have created this paradigm that can't be altered. There's an a, a orthodoxy paradox. Uh, an it's a bootstrap. Paradox, it's, it's a, it's a right, bootstrap yeah. paradox of theology. In fact, one of the, one of the early Christians, the Gnostics, what whether we want to throw them out or not there we, some we probably them, should yeah. yeah some of them were there's 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 12 gods that's 365 that's, gods I, i'm and not trying all to the go, same right so i'm right. not trying to go down that path but that's kind of the point and that then, i'm making is if the destroyer was, is unique then maybe there's a fourth are there others that we miss that we've glossed over that weren't translated properly is it just that god has an innumerable number of personalities because he's god and, and then there's there's the there's the modus why, why the, wouldn't the, the modality guys that I don't even know well, what that means that, by the way Brian's brought that up before and we've never modalist. fleshed out what what modalism is we should what there's does that one mean? God and then he he well, uses he 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 uses the different <clears throat> names we have for God to do to do his bidding basically like, oh, God it, is that's one all, person okay it is and one he, person there's not but there's he not manifests in different modes he manifests he, right yeah. That's okay. what that means. But why why wouldn't the the angel of God who in the Passover just be the same angel of Yahweh who appears in every other instance? I don't why know. would it be? Right, because it, they, they gave it a different name. They purposely right. called it the destroyer. Because they didn't say the spirit of the Lord then went and killed all these babies. Because they're describing him by his activity. It's not it's not a name. Mm, I, I disagree with that. I, I don't, that Why? just that feels like a simplistic answer. That feels like an easy way to just whitewash it away think, and not have I to think deal you're, with it. I think you're overcomplicating it to to arrive at uh, to to strain out a conclusion. That's. I mean, we'll agree to disagree on that, right? Like, I I think you're simplifying it, and you think I'm overcomplicating it. Cool, but the point is, it's there, and I've never heard it addressed. I've never heard it, anybody have a point of view or a take on what that is or why they call him that or it that. We don't know if it's God. We don't know if it's the spirit. We don't, it might be the female destroyer. I don't know. Oh, no, you guys, matter. you guys know I'm the last person in the world to 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 say that dissenting from the majority is an automatic disqualifier. That that automatically means you're true. Because I'm on the fringe for for quite a few things we've discussed. Um, but but as a general rule, if two thousand years of Christian tradition has a has a particular set of beliefs. If there isn't any particular reason to question it, it's probably safe to go with it. That's I, I, see, there's oh, where I disagree. Man. So, Come on. so they no, no, killed so many people for having a different right. point yeah. of view. So it was dangerous even, to have a different so point of view. Your, well, your, your, even your, your example of that's the that's the <laughs> default, and they wouldn't screen it out. Well, even when at the Council of Nicaea, there were what three? There was eighteen original bishops that wouldn't sign it, and then the Constantine strong armed what seventeen of them to do it, uh -uh, and then the no, three that wouldn't. That's not were, what happened. Okay, can I finish? And then, the, and then the other three were like ousted, right? They're gone. They're like excommunicated. And then the, what, there was another council, council of Constantinople, where there were even well, hang on. There was like three be or four. Be before you close out on Nicaea, they got in a fist fight over the date of Easter. Well, okay. But, but my, this, my point, this bears, though, my point, yeah, but, my point on but this, this bears is, correction, though, Dre. Because you you're, can you can correct it when I'm done. So okay. <clears throat> my point is is that. 
no, everyone did not agree. And when they didn't, they were deemed a heretic and they were booted out. Okay. Go ahead. What, what, okay. was, what was I wrong on? Your description of the Council of Nicaea is totally inaccurate. Um, Constantine did not strong arm anybody. Um, that there were there were two purposes for the Council of Nicaea. It was to settle the Arian controversy and to decide the date of Easter. The the Arian controversy is what I'm talking about. But I know, but I'm making ahead. a point. I'm I'm painting sure. a picture here, and I'm and I'm and I'm correcting. And it's not it's not just you. This is a this is a widespread misconception about Nicaea. Um, and a lot of the the, tr the Trinitarian debates revolve around this 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 idea that Constantine strong armed people and that and if you if you dissented you were cast out that's absolutely not true what happened was so this was just to set the stage I'm, I'm going to make this the this will this will go quick if you just let me paint the picture here um, this was after the crisis of the fourth century when the empire almost fell apart. Uh, there was a civil war. Constantine finally rose to the top, settled everything. He wanted to use Christianity as a, as kind of a cultural cement to to unite the empire. And so soon after, and he's and he's basically looking forward to a, a peaceful rest of his reign after this this massive bloody civil war. And so, but soon after, he he assumed sole the the sole uh, rulership of the empire, the Arian controversy breaks out and it's tearing Christianity apart. So Constantine convenes the first church wide ecumenical council to discuss this, and he does he doesn't want them to he doesn't see it as a debate. He sees it as as a way for everybody to come together and and compromise. And so when they he started he started the. Uh, the council, he introduced himself. He kind of said, made, did all, made his obligatory appearance. And then he was out of it. Then they debated the, the creed. They debated two things. Actually, they debated the date of Easter. The Western churches were using the, uh, the spring equinox as, as the basis for setting the date of Easter. The Eastern churches were using the date of Passover. And so they were, they were different. So they both celebrated Easter on different days. Uh, uh, in keeping with his plan to to unify everybody, Constantine wanted them to agree on both to come to some kind of compromise on both topics. They arrived at the uh, the Nicene Creed and determined and decided that the, all the, everybody who couldn't who wouldn't sign off on it was anathematized, and they decided on the Western method for following Easter. Um, the Eastern churches heard this. They said they shrugged, said okay, and kept doing it the way they were doing it, and they still do that to this day. That's why you still ha you have two different dates of Easter on the calendar. And Constantine was furious about this creed because he didn't want he didn't want people to anathematize. He wanted agreement, and so what happened was he favored the Arians. They had his ear in court. His son uh, Con uh, Constantius the second he was a full on Arian. Athanasius, who was the champion of the Trinity, uh, he was he was exiled and outlawed and on the run for for much of his life um, because the Arians were in power. So this idea that Constantine strong armed people and that's why that that's why the Trinity went out. That's just not true. The, it, the Trinity went out because that was what the majority of the church agreed to, agreed upon. I didn't say that that's why it went out. I didn't say that him strong arming him is why it went why it won out. I'm saying the actual with of the 300 <clears throat> plus bishops, 18 of them, and then my man was what? He was furious that they didn't agree. So he talked 17 was, of them into agreeing. Constantine did not talk them into that. I, Const that's, I, Constantine I've heard from, from from more than one scholar. So it's it's a thing. Well, I so I'd, we, I mean, I'd be interested in. I mean, if if Bart Ehrman is one of those scholars, that's that's, that's one of your problems. He is one, but he is one. Well, he wildly overstates the 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 amount of dissent that existed in the early church. But Bart um, Bart's one of those guys that can be right and wrong at the same time. I don't. I 
I'm long past thinking that Bart Ehrman is acting in good faith. He, I didn't say he was acting in good faith. I said he can be right and wrong at the same time. He can have some accurate data, but then he can present it in a way that twists the story to give yeah, a different point. That's, of view. that's what I'm saying. And he knows he's doing that because he knows where his bread is buttered. But uh, who, okay, butters, so, who, who butters his bread? He sells books telling non believers what they want to hear. Oh, fair. Um, I mean, you if you read some of his early books, um, the, hit, the links to his books will not be in the in the descriptions below. Or should we, <laughs> no, no, should no. we link to his books also in 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 fair in uh, mind uh, in a open kind I'll, of? I'll, uh, I'll let you decide. I subscribe to his blog. I don't pay for it, but I mean, I read his stuff. I I I value his part of the conversation just so I know what his part of the conversation is. But if like he's he has to know he's being dishonest. He has to know that he's misleading people. Like he tells, he tells the story of how he, uh, he went from being a fundamentalist evangelical who, who subscribed to inerrancy to becoming an unbeliever. And he makes it sound in a lot of his early books, like this happened because of his scholarly studies, because he learned about the, the textual evidence and the, the, and the history. And then this is what broke his faith. He, and so this is what everybody assumes when they talk to him. Then in interviews, they ask him questions along those lines. He's like, no, that's not why I, I, I lost my faith. It's because of the problem of evil. Um, yeah, but your book the says- The problem no, of I, evil is why he lost his faith? Yes. It's because that's, of those that's, damn that's Calvinists. What, that's what he said, <laughs> at least. <laughs> which I, I find that as implausible as the textual evidence did it. But he denies that it's because of his scholarship or because of the textual evidence. Because it does, because it it would be really silly. Because it doesn't. the The more you know about the history and the textual evidence, the stronger Christianity becomes, not the other way around. But which is why he backed off from that. But he knows that, you know, there's this great interview. There's this great uh, video of him. Ex- he's accepting an award at some atheist group. Um, the and, Avian. And he, Ah, uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, is that something? Uh, yeah. Sp- keep, keep going. In Vegas. Um, those that get it, get it. Okay. Well, he's got a, he's got a stat, like this little golden statue of like a naked emperor. And that's their, their view of religion, I guess. But somebody, somebody made a remark to him about how, uh, like people are always citing him to argue that Jesus never existed. Um which is of course occasion him writing a book explaining why, well, that's silly. Cause if I'm writing books about what Jesus really said, he had to have existed, but considering Muslims and Jews <clears throat> believe he existed, right? Like that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, atheists use this stuff cause it, it lends itself so easily to, uh, to their using it and which of course gives him opportunity to write more books and, um, which I don't, you know, I don't, I don't mean to come down too hard on him, but he must know what he's doing and that that's why he's selling books. So anyway, I mean, I Mark Twain that. said, you know, something to the effect of never underestimate human stupidity, right? Sure. But, uh, I, you know, I don't want to spend the whole night prosecuting Bart Ehrman, but that's, uh, that's what I think of him. If anybody listening at home, I don't remember I how we got to this point or how to bring us back to what we were talking about. Scholars and what they say. Yeah, right. And oh, Bart Constantine. Was right, one right, of right, them. right, right, right. Thank and you. Bart Ehrman was one of the scholars that got it. I read that got talked it. about it. But also the idea, and one this isn't necessarily of, what, what Dre said, but it, it's still a common idea that that's kind of a package deal with this. The idea that Constantine could have exerted his will upon the church if he wanted to this is right after the diocletian persecution which was the most severe empire-wide brutal persecution in history where people were being tortured and to recant and they they wouldn't uh it was illegal to own scripture um people kept them anyway people suffered horribly and greatly and the church was uh there was just such massive persecution that but christians by and large stayed faithful the idea that that could happen that they would they would endure all that under pers- under diocletian and then constantine would come to power and just be able to have his way with the church and everybody go along with it it's just it just doesn't the, but in, in but my this- 
he's he's not having his way with the church. He's having his way with three hundred out of three hundred and eighteen, and and he's say, hey, you eighteen need to get your, your trash together, or you know these guys are going to kick you out. I so, mean, I I think I would say it differently uh, to to say that it's 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 uh august 20th 2023 right to say that president joe biden has no effect or ability to affect the us economy or that donald j trump during his presidency had no effect on things that happened in the country would be absurd to say that an emperor in roman times had no ability to exert his will on a group of people is insanity so he um, had the ability to exert his will to the extent that he did it. We can have he, we can have a conversation and, and there, about. And there are there are uh, examples of he was emperors. a Roman I think, emperor. Come I think on. the next emperor yeah, wanted the, to do something, but and then the, one of the the bishops stood against him, and and the emperor lost. He like had to he had to well, like, let, I mean, let it go that way. Matt, also, you're just you're just blowing right past the Diocletian persecution. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that I, 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 I'm <clears throat> I, I'm making the point that. A man of the level of authority of the Roman emperor could exert his will. And those guys, by the way, lived and died by their willing their their awareness of to the, the extent to which they could exert that will without upsetting their constituency. Right. And that one or two emperors later, it went the other way around. Julian so the, the apostate. The, the Christians did have the power. So oh. I mean I mean, things like Jews couldn't own a Christian slave. Yeah, I, I agree that it went bad Jews pretty soon. Like... But, but to put all that in perspective, um, about 318 bishops, the, 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 high, the high estimate is that 318 bishops went to the Council of Nicaea. That's out of about 1,800 bishops in the entire world. Mm -hmm. right. So the, the, the vast majority of, of Christendom wasn't even there. Right. And and that's what I'm trying to say is to say that uh, the guy who that's who brought them all together couldn't affect the few hundred that showed up. Like that's you know like like people you know he's got his his advisors standing around. They're like, hey, listen, emperor, want you? He's like, yeah. Not to mention like, hey, by the way, you know, you all agree, and you are the most influential for all of Christendom. So or my entire empire. So guess what? I mean, I, I'm not suggesting that it was untoward or that it was wrong even. But to I'm dismiss either, his ability way. to have any influence over the outcome is is a little naive. That's all I'm trying well, to say. Except he didn't have any influence over the outcome. He just okay. he just didn't. He was furious about the outcome. Um, he he didn't want he didn't want a creed that excluded anybody. He wanted a compromise. No, I get fine. that. He didn't. I get but that. The bishops that won did. So they they kicked them out then. So who who ousted him? Well, what do you mean by ousted? What does that mean? There was there were some bishops like some Arian ousting. himself that could not come and worship ever again. Ever well, Lillian cannot use the phone <laughs> ever again. So so I, I, the stories I recall, uh, Saint Nicholas okay. was was kicked out for fighting for fisticuffs. Well, right? he, he, he had to sit outside and time out. He but, slapped but the Arian problem didn't but, go away after Nicaea. That's kind of my point. Is it persisted for centuries? This yeah, idea, he's like, that, oh. Oh, you want to kick me out? That's cool. I got, I got, I got bros over here. Well, they we enjoyed the, the, they enjoyed political favor for for quite a while after that because Constantine was so mad at the Trinitarians. So this idea that the uh, well, the victors wrote the history, and that's why, and they 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 burned all the Aryan stuff, and they they excluded them from influence. Just it's just not true. Well, is it not true? Because where is that writing? Um. For writing to still to have still existed today, somebody has to care enough to keep copying it and preserving it. Right. So okay, so it wasn't burned; it was just it just fell into obscurity. Yeah, it just it books because fall somebody out. Somebody else won. Books like, fall out of. Yeah, but you're making it sound like it was it was a it was a fight, and that they exerted political power to to stop right. the other people. I, no, they they won, and I put that in scary quotes. They won because that was already the majority view, and the Aryans were already they they were a, they were a small group that enjoyed some political favor, and they persisted because you, of you know what that's that's totally fine, but that that's not can keep me from being skeptical because I don't get to see their side of the story for any of these guys. Okay, well, I mean, 
I'm just addressing the common misconception that the Aryans were just actively the- persecuted and their books were burned and that's why we don't have it. And it was, it was just an arbitrary political. Uh, but at, at the same time, they, it wasn't like the same type of, uh, you know, what we have in the United States with, with religious freedom. You, you literally, you couldn't even be pagan anymore. Right. If you, if you practice paganism, you were in trouble. Am I wrong? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. So why would that not be the case with Christianity that was deemed heretical? Uh, well, yet Arianism persisted for centuries for after that. For for a minute. For centuries, up into for the like minute. in the into the high Middle Ages. Is it too soon to say make make America Rome again? <laughs> so you, you, couldn't be, you, you couldn't be a pagan. I think America. <laughs> oh, right. Gotcha. But. Um, Anyway, I mean, I think we're, <clears throat> I guess we're at an impasse with the historical discussion, but yeah, is there, do you, is there, is there anything else you want to say about the Trinity, Dre, or any, any I mean, questions other, we want to? Other wanna... than the fact that I don't think that Jesus is God, then that I, there, there's so, so, so Matt has the, has the Holy Spirit and it's not enumerated. I am just, um, Yeah. Jesus came from God, so he's not God. They're not the same person. They're three different persons. Well, and there you go. Third. To my okay, well, to I mean, my I... to my Trinitarian ears, <clears throat> that was the most insane response to a question. Brian said, "Do you have any other points?" And Dre said, "Other than Jesus isn't God, no." Like, other, like other than I don't that, even know no, how to no. process those words. Like, so what would it what would it take for you to believe that he is? What so, what evidence? It, it has to do with what is what is what does it mean to be God, right? So, okay, um, and and you're gonna have to forgive me, and I and this is not a cop out. Um, since my stroke, I legitimately can't remember things that I've read. Mm-hmm. So even things that I read today, I don't I don't know where where to begin, and and uh, uh, that's that's actually difficult for me because once upon a time. You know, I could tell you what Tony Gwynn batted every single season of his entire career. And now, now I cannot. So, um, so. I, I think I, so, so I think I'll start with, I, I believe, or I've seen, and I've read inside the Bible that there is a, there's a track of, of Jesus Christology growing throughout time. For example, you have in Paul and in Acts where there are some pre-literary uh, maybe creeds or, or 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 sayings or poems. Sure. Think, uh, Philippians 2. Um, Philippians 2 is what Romans 1 um, and uh, and 1 Corinthians 15, right? I think I think those are the, the three that that are that are attributed to Paul and there's one in, in those, Timothy also. First Timothy. Okay. But, and in the, and in those, Jesus is exalted at his resurrection. So he was a being, and then ba- basically it's it's one of the three, one of the three um different types of Christology that was the that was the big battle in the early Christians. So you had like the adoptionists, you had the docesis. And then you had like the dual. So basically, so you couldn't, so one group of people believed that he was fully human. Another group of people believed that he was fully divine. And then another group of people thought that he was two different beings in one. And there's where, where Christians had to kind of squash that and make all three of those go away. Am, am I off there? Um, I, I think that you're, you're representing a popular version of this argument. But I would I would say that you're I, those I don't think those are an accurate representation okay. of those that, passages. And, and, and but, that, so no, no no I'm not talking about the passages I'm talking about the, the <clears throat> arguments that people had the different early Christian fights the early right. Christian I would I would push back that the the action the the first Christological heresy was not that he was he was only a man and not god it was that he was fully god but not really human you get that from 
first John and the, no, sure. But sure, um, that's the, the, so, and then as it, as it moves on Mark, which many scholars believe is the, the first of the, of the gospels written earliest says that he was exalted at the baptism. And then you have the other two synoptics that come along like, ah, well, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to make it at his birth. And then John, it was the high Christology that has him preexistent. That, that is the common view. I mean, among critical skeptical scholars, that's, that's the view. Um, there's, there's not really any evidence for it, though. I, I disagree. So, I mean, it, it, even the things that, that Jesus says, right, where... Was... <clears throat> uh, so first, when he, when he, uh, in Matthew, when he talks about... Uh, um, he gives more props to, to John the Baptist. Um, where is it in Matthew when he... Um, when he when he heals the the lame guy and then they're like hey who are you to say that he uh with his with his sins and he's like who am i i'm i'm the one that's been given authority i i i think that in that time it, it's like it's like we've we've downplayed the word adoption as if as if you're adopted by someone you are not fully you don't you don't fully take on their 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 persona um what, where I don't, the, I don't, i'm not what do you mean Dre? that's i'm not following that okay so uh basically like oh he's a mirror man so we can't I, I think the emphasis is wrong there the emphasis should be on his exaltation and not on his mirror so matt you may understand something where someone if you have a real child or a biological child and you have an adopted child where somebody would say that's not really your child that's kind of a an inference, but no no adopted parent would ever say that, right? And in the Roman times, there was only two people that were, or two different beings that were the son of God. One was the Roman emperor, and one was Jesus. And the first Roman emperor was adopted. He wasn't the actual son of Julius Caesar. You're talking about uh, Augustus. Augustus. Augustus, right, right, right. So he was he was Livia's yeah. Livia's kid from a pre from a prior marriage. Right. So this idea that was about... literally that show I was just watching, by the way. I was <laughs> oh, telling you guys that Netflix show. Yeah. Um, this idea about the 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 earlier versions have a low Christology and then the developing high Christology um in later versions. That it that's that is the standard view among critical scholars. There's also no evidence for it. Um they they start with their theology and then they fit the evidence to it. Like they, there's this idea of whether you have the Jesus of history versus the Christ of faith. And the Christ of faith is the figure that you find in the New Testament, who is a legendary embellishment upon the historical Jesus. And they they presuppose this idea of legendary development to because they start out already knowing well we know that such a we know that such a being could not exist because we know there's no god of israel we know that god doesn't exist at least in the 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 personal sense um so there's no there are no prophets who who through whom he speaks there are no messiahs or no miracle workers so what how do we make sense of the existence of the new testament well okay well what happened was he started out as a a mere mortal a, a great teacher of morals who did a few faith healings and then as the oral the the stories about him spread in telephone game fashion they were kind of embellished as time went on and and they by the time they were written down in the gospels then they took on these these divine proportions where he's walking on water and raising the dead and he's God incarnate. Um, um, but there's no evidence for that. There, in fact, it, I don't, in fact, I don't, it flies in the face that, of, I, I don't think that's, that's how it went. I, I think that there was, well, there was, there was actual debate and argument over that. And they, and they put it in, into the gospel. I don't think it was a game of telephone and miscommunication. I well, was, I'm just saying I think that's it's done. I think it's done purposefully. Like, but I'm saying that was that's the view of critical scholars, though. Yeah, I, and the, I get and that. that. And that and that lends itself that. to the arguments that you're making. 
The fact of the matter is, if you look in the opening passage of Mark, he's outright identified as Yahweh. Um, the, the John the Baptist. Um, in Mark 1, they quote the Isaiah and Malachi prophecies about the voice of one calling in the wilderness who, who prepares the way of Yahweh. It isn't quite as obvious to us in, in English, um, if, but if you read the the, he, the original Old Testament text that they're quoting, it it's clearly about Yahweh that the prophet to which the prophecies pertain. So, and then if John the Baptist is the voice in the wilderness preparing the way of Yahweh, and it's for Jesus that he's preparing the way, the writer Mark is outright calling Jesus Yahweh to the to John the Baptist's uh, voice in the wilderness. I think I. I think I I did read those Old Testament <clears throat> passages and I I saw them differently and I can't remember how or why. Do you want to look at them now? And that that sucks. No. Um. I mean the the Old Testament passages are unmistakably about Yahweh. The the, the they're quoting the Septuagint in in Mark when they when he cites those passages, which has it as Kyrios. Which is how they translated the divine name in the Septu in, in the which which part I, I'm trying to follow along also Brian. Oh, okay. So I have I have Mark one up. What, what are you talking so, about? So I I think there's I think there's there's scholarly debate on on the word curios, right? No. 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 Well, then why would I have heard that? <laughs> so I, I don't like, I don't I can't account for that. But it, it is a fact are, that are, we're talking about Mark curios, one, guys. Yes. yes. It is a fact that in the Septuagint when. If you, if you look in Mark and you you see that when he talks about the voice of the the, the voice in the wilderness who pre prepares the way for the Lord, mm -hmm. it, it it is indeed true that in Greek the Greek for Lord is Kyrios. It's also true that in in Greek Kyrios doesn't necessarily mean God or divinity. It can be used in other contexts to just speak to a, a Lord in a human sense, Master, right. Right. But in this passage, but I mean, you have to bear in mind, he's quoting scripture in this passage. If we go to that scripture, the scripture that he's quoting, it says Kyrios, because that's how this, that's how the Septuagint translators put the divine name, because there, there's the convention uh, among Jews not to pronounce what's, what's the he name. quoting in the Old Testament. He's quoting Isaiah 40 and Malachi, I think chapter two or three. I mean, it should be in the footnotes of Mark 1. Oh. Yeah, it's it's uh, Isaiah 43. 40 verse, verse three. Uh, 3. Yeah, 3 through... Uh, it's yeah. just, it's just three. Yeah. A voice cries out in the wilderness, clear a way for the Lord, build a level road through the rift valley for our God. Right. That's, also, the, that's the NET. Because that's my yeah. that's my gym. <laughs> but also Malachi 3, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. This is God speaking through the prophet. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant whom you desire, says Yahweh Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? And so this is a this is a messianic passage, and it's it, an argument could be made that this was fulfilled by Jesus cleansing the temple, um, and by dying for the sins of the world and tearing the curtain in the temple in two. But I mean that you know that's that's Mark, which is which is the earliest and has supposedly the lowest Christology, opens his book his gospel identifying Jesus as as Yahweh. Um, okay. so, and also like, if you, if you look at those passages, those, those, uh, those early Christian creeds that Paul cites, um, Philippians two is one of them. <clears throat> um, your attitude should be the same. I can't find it. Um, no, it's. I think I heard your, it. your your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in being in the very being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be exploited, but made himself nothing, taking the very taking the very form of a servant, being found in, in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in right. heaven and on earth. And that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's pregnant with, with so, so theology that, that needs unpackaged, that, that, but it's that also that a reference. That. It's also a reference to Daniel seven about the son of man coming into the presence of the ancient of days and being given authority. But go ahead, Dre. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I I agree, and I think that that has to do with with Israel and humans and uh, what what does the the Son of Man and Daniel? Where is so because it so hold on, so Dre, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip what I've been arguing with with Brian about right as a as at least a binarian, not necessarily sure. a Trinitarian, right? Sure. When I when I read specifically Philippians 2, 6 through 11, I can't read that any other way than that saying that Jesus was God. Like it's 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 glaringly obvious to my to okay. my to my mind as I read it, right? And again, yeah. this I, is this I, is I what I was talking as about. A, as a representation of God. So no, I think I, I, he, I totally right. get that. But this is but but it, it, I'm trying to be like you know, yeah, yeah, and that's, straight and with that's the okay. way I'm reading it with my with my perspective because I think when we read this with a bias, we're reading it, it it takes on a subtly different tone, right? So it, to me, this is fascinating, by the way, right? Because for for Dre reading this through the eyes of a non Trinitarian, you know, Jesus isn't God; he's created by God, but yet you know, important and all of those things when you read that, you're like, mm, I'm reading this with a different filter. I read this and it's like, it's pretty simple to me. I hear what Brian said and I'm like, yeah, that's a, clearly what this says. Right. Cause it's, it's simply that it's six through seven, right. I don't need the rest of it. It's, it's Philippians two, six and seven. And the theology that is being displayed there, he's being in very nature god he took on human he took on human appearance he became mm -hmm. a man and so he he divested himself of all of the prerogatives and powers of divinity but he's still god it's still he's still mm -hmm. in in his person he's still god but he's god on human terms mm -hmm. with only the prerogatives of a man yeah but then he dies for the sins of the world therefore as a man he is exalted to the right hand of, of god but he was right. always god but I, I, I see that as so who through he was in the form of God did not count equality with God because it's not a thing to be grasped. Mm -hmm. So to me, that that harkens back to Genesis where, hey, if you're going to be like God, you have to you, it, it, you can't go grasp those things. Adam grasped to be like God. I, and I, I see what you're saying. So now what, I, so what, I, I hear what that. Jesus is doing is he's emptying himself and becoming a servant, which is what we should do instead right. of do what Adam did. So, so that's, and, and then he went so far with his servantry that he even died on the cross. And then because of that, God exalted him yeah. to be the ruler of this place. So, so, so in that sense, he is God to us, but he is not God the Father. He was... Oh. Be no, God. he's not God the Father. But what so so let me Wait, give you my so, let me give okay. you my read. So so my read on this is this is the conversation <laughs> with the thief. The thief looks at Jesus and right. says, If you're God, call down your angels and end this thing. Like prove it. And that's what that's saying. Verse six did not regard the fact that he is God as something to be grasped, saying he could have called all this off. But he the, chose not to. Right. The, that's the Greek, that's okay. that's the unique difference here. That's that's my and I I get what you're saying. Hundred percent. I can see how you read that because of your your the way you're coming in this from and, and I and different angle, the, right? Right. Like so so when the, a, when a when a captain walks into the room, you salute him, right? Mm -hmm. When a when a battalion commander walks into the room, he's still your daddy. Mm -hmm. Right. But what this is saying oh. is this is like this is the saying, Greek word for the Greek word for seize or is harpazo. And the, it's it, it's the it's like to grab something and run off with it or to the, the connotation of is is of pressing an advantage or exploiting. And I think the, the point of it here is that the important point here is where he's starting off. He's starting off as God. 
He's just not exerting his, he's just not pressing his rights as God. If he's not actually God, it's not that he was a mere man, but he earned the right to be called God. Right. He started out as God. He didn't so, exploit it. So so through this, so through this reading this week, I have I have landed on pre-existence. I I am not of the he didn't get exalted wow. until he was okay. baptized or or that he was uh resurrected, that he was that he was a servant of God and he came down to come come do this stuff as a man. Uh, so that's 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 prog- that's that's different. Dre, let me ask you this. Did you did you watch the video, the Jordan Peterson video, the one we were just talking about? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you got all of that, right? What he was saying about how the the act of choosing to love God is what yeah, is for sure. special, right? And I'm and I'm I'm totally one hundred percent with that. Conversely, that's what is so special about Christ choosing to die. He hundred percent didn't have to. At any point he could have called that off, right? Because it's God, right? Well, but in, in what other, if God, even if he's God too, for lack of a, for fair, lack of a better fair, term, fair. he could still call it off, but it's a bigger still... deal. If he's God one, if he's, he's got, he's got actual, he's not right. He, he right. He, he, he's not God Bravo. He's got actual. He's just God forward. Right. Maybe. So, so for for the uninitiated that are listening, I'm using mili- <laughs> I'm using military com jargon, right? And what we're talking about is actual versus bravo versus forward is how you describe command elements on in military, in, at least in U.S. military, which the three of us are. Um, but the point is, is forward becomes actual when the rest of the the element catches up with, right? So that's that's the 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 the, the analogy I'm trying to use here to to make a point, but. Jesus was God forward on earth, but he was always God actual. When General Mattis was moving, he was always right, he's still General Mattis. He was still he was forward or not, right? Yeah. Mr. Mattis, <laughs> aka general, right? But his command name was different based on his role that he was playing. And when he took Baghdad and he called in that VTC and he said, Baghdad is now blue diamond actual, right? Right. He was declaring that he had taken Baghdad as part of the the forward movement. And to me, that's the difference here is it's the difference of actual forward versus, you know, whatever, but it's still the same dude walking and moving and communicating and and, and wreaking havoc on bad guys. A weird sure. analogy, but that's that's I don't think it's a weird how analogy my brain at all. See- <laughs> well, of course you don't. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everybody else is like, "What the hell are y'all talking about?" But uh, but that's I'm, how I, that's how I read six, seven, and eight specifically. Right? He could have called this off because he was at the same time the dude. He's the dude standing next to the dude. Doesn't know who the dude is. I I just think that, and there's many more passages that basically talk about by, with, and through. Right. So, you know, be, because of the creator, we have these things. And because of Jesus, we go through Jesus to get to the father to do these things. So why are they the same person? They're not the, They're same, not the person, same person, right? Person. Uh, right. right. The same I, being. I, right. <laughs> okay. I mean, that, Remember, that matters. It's so simple I mean, a caveman could do it. Yeah, right. Well, the, I mean, it's... Uh... You know, I'm not splitting hairs. That's that. No, that matters. I, this is this goes back to the complication and the 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 you know the, the lack of simplicity around such a simple concept. And look, I, I get it. At the end of the day, it's something that's greater than us, so it shouldn't be easy. But like, I I don't feel like the three of us collectively represent the lowest level of intelligence on planet earth at all i'm just i'm just gonna say that right and if the three of us are struggling to succinctly and fully comprehend a concept that's supposedly fundamental and necessary to the overall theology of christianity what does that mean for everybody else that isn't attempting to wrap their brains minds hearts and souls around i think you're overstating the the level of difficulty though Am I? You are. When we spent no less than 10, 12 hours on this, and maybe we've moved the we've moved the ball, but like it hasn't been a oh, 
Why didn't you just say so? You're sending the wolf? Well, that's all you had to say. Okay. Again, I mean, the Trinity, the, the term Trinity is shorthand for a constellation of ideas about God. Mm -hmm. Each of those ideas about God are individually explicitly stated, or there are. Matt looks like he's got something going on here. It's just hot in here, man. I got to turn my fan on. Like I'm almost sweaty. Um, it might be, maybe it's maybe it's the each of the individual components of the Trinity. You can you can find there's no shortage of passages to support each one of them. But so it it's not at the end of the day that that difficult to grasp. But it it's when you well I don't know I'm not I mean I'm not going to venture guesses for why you guys are are having trouble trouble with it but well, i'm not having trouble with this i got this one's easy for me but like i said it's because of my 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 pre-existing perspective i think okay. and, and and that bot that that in of itself concerns me not that i'm wrong I, well i'm not i'm not but gonna i'm also not gonna concede that that all of a sudden i was some kind of brainwashed kid into not believing something. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I think. No, I think it's the reverse. I, no, I, I think it's I the think reverse. Brian probe. actually did infer that through chat. Well, Brian might have. Brian's a jerk. Well, I'm not. most definitely did. But that's okay. But, okay. I. I didn't so, look. So what? I, I, I didn't know that was off limits. I apologize. Well, no, if it's that not was. off limits. It's, but uh, but uh, but I'm saying it's not true. No. Um, but just to be clear, what I what I act I never said. Hey, Dre. Dre was brainwashed as a kid. That's why I didn't I, think this. I, it was short. I, I just used a shorthand term. What I said was it would be weird if Dre was raised in this and he had no attachment whatsoever to it. That's all I said. And okay. Like, and it's fair. So that, that would be weird. <laughs> it's almost like, it's almost like the fact that I'm struggling with it when the fact when I was actually raised in it. Unless you just wanted to rebel against your parents, but it doesn't seem like you have that kind of relationship. Nah, that's that's like not at all what this is. This is this is the it. opposite. This is no, I this is. I know. Sorry, I, I was talking about Dre. Like if if Dre just wanted to be oh. rebellious against his parents, then I can understand. Like, no, I love the Trinity. Trinity's the best thing ever. <laughs> right, right, right. But <laughs> you, sit, you have a you, you have a good relationship with your like, parents. And but, but, well, the truth was, while I was sitting there, I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted to get to the you know the next song where I can get up and get a drink and talk to some girls. Right, go right. to lunch or something. Right. Go eat. Yeah. When do we? When do we yeah. eat? Like I'm like I'm, I'm even starving. Know talking about right? when's the next song, dude? I'm trying to sing. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to blow, dog. I, I, I do want to ask. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. I just no, go ahead. I was afraid it was going to move on before I got yeah. to ask my question, and I got I jumped the gun. I apologize. I'm rude. Yeah. What were you saying, Dre? Sorry, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and ask your question. I'm sorry. Well, well, but conversely, that's why I didn't let my daughter go to uh, summer Christian church camp at, at <laughs> local a, False Creek yeah. because yeah. I went to False Creek, and my daughter was not going to go to the place <laughs> I went to. I went to False Creek in college, and. Uh, uh yeah there were there were some uh were yeah. some shenanigans we moved back there. here from texas and my wife was like carrie was like hey uh apparently this falls creek is a big deal and i was like yeah no nah, she ain't I'll, going i'll bet it <laughs> is <laughs> and carrie just looked at me and goes i'll take your word for it i don't want to hear the stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah that tracks i'm out <laughs> she's like i know you and I know if you say no there's a good reason for that and i don't want to know about it and she's not right. going no i'm saying <laughs> Dre, what do you do with John chapter one? John chapter one is is where I've actually landed on the preexistence. Okay. So but how do you I, stop short of him being God? But that hang on, Dre. So you get it from that, but not from Genesis one. It took John, not Genesis, to get you there? No, together. Oh, okay. To, uh, together. But I mean, but John's just recasting Genesis 1, right? He, right. Well, okay. so he's he's recasting Genesis 1, but with specific emphasis on the word and, and the, to word me, the word flesh. To me, the word was uttered, which means it's no longer God. It just has God properties. So but if I had it, so if I had a lighter and I lit a fire over there, it's still a fire. So you look, it's, so it's a fire. derivative issue for you. Is that what it is? Yes. But because the word was with God, not the word. And God were always there. You're like, so in the beginning there was fire because there was fire, there was heat. And but the that's heat not is what it, Jesus. But no, that's not no, what I'm, it says. No, it's, it, it says explicitly the says the word was God. Yeah, I, I quibble with that. I don't know. I mean, it says it. 
Man, I, Johnny, I, Brian, so, I, Brian, I feel like I feel like he's look, getting there. Take take the win and move on, and don't, yeah, don't I mean, beat it into the ground. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to win something. I I, I genuinely want to know, like how, like what do you do with that? I don't do think you... it's the same God. I think that it is of God <laughs> because God has so many different different connotations. When he, so when, when you ask an ancient an ancient person from that time, you're like, hey, uh, you think that's God? Like first the first question is, what do you mean by God? What do you mean by that? What's your what's your word? So, um, just to review, it reads: In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and then it talks about how He's the true light. Um, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or or husband's will, but born of God. Born of God through Jesus, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So it's clearly talking about Jesus, and it's clearly talk in it. I mean, it, it, it explicitly reads, the word was God. And that that verse, that passage, I mean, I could understand maybe taking that passage in isolation if that was the only thing and and kind of lawyering it that way but after everything we discussed about how the word of yahweh was yahweh and the same person as i I didn't agree with that that's that's something you and matt came to an agreement with which one the the word of yahweh is is yahweh i didn't i never i never signed off on that okay so how do you how do you the the word is something yahweh created But it says he so, was with God in the beginning. Like the second verse is, is the differentiator then. But he, right. but it also outright says the word was God. Okay. So if if he is a if if the word is a different God, then there are two gods. The the Shema, the mon- monotheism is no longer true. Then there are in fact two gods, not just one. But the scripture throughout and says there's only one god well there's only one there's only one eternal god so dre let me ask you this and and i'm asking this with all charity i'm just trying to understand where you're at are you in a place where like god was always there and then like a freaking nanosecond later he made jesus and so they were there like kind of sort of forever but it just wasn't forever or they sure. both came yeah, into yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm yeah. just trying to yeah. understand where you're I mean, at. Yeah, it, that's the the first created thing ever was the word. God. Wait, w- the word. So the word. God is the word and the, Jesus no, isn't is, the word. God is God is God is eternal. So Yahweh Yahweh's the word. That's what you're saying, Yahweh's the word. So then Christ isn't the word? Is that what you're saying? And I'm not trying to trap you. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get to common ground. Or do you no, not do yeah, you not Yahweh. know? Wait. I'm I'm not sure. I'm I'm just okay, saying that's fair. There's, there's I, I, God, and then and then the Word, and the Word became Jesus, right? So and that would make that would mean Mark has a higher Christology than John, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I I don't I don't I don't care. I'm just trying to get to a place of understanding because I'm. Which, by the way, I don't think John has a higher Christology than Mark. I think you were making a point. I get it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think they both have high Christology. They're just. They just express it differently. Is it Christology? Ooh. I always pronounce it Christology. Potato, t- tomato. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, some people think that's, that matters. In the feedback, <laughs> is it is it short I or long I? Is it trochaic or iambic? <laughs> what? Wait, what are you <laughs> not, saying? Not that the it same was? thing, but <laughs> you're saying Christology or Christology? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I say Christology. So is he is he Jesus Christ? Well, it's Christmas, not Christmas. Um, it's christened yeah. not christened them it should that? be they're it dickhead should be the, it should be the christ <laughs> right. mass it might should be but it ain't it might, but it's not well, so is it christology or christology okay maybe he's well, jesus christ of all the things I, we I like argue about, i'll just i'll just let you have this one i because you lost because i just gave you three versions that's the other <laughs> pronunciation <laughs> okay you came sure. in all chesty you got uh, slapped i know you got I'm, you got harvey spectered on that one that's I'm what... humili- i am humiliated you win <laughs> Well, you should be. Yeah. I, yeah. Let us know in the comments. Is it Christology? Christology. 
I'm, I mean, I'm serious. Like, is like, I, it's, it's, I'm just curious. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change your salvation. I'm just curious if you, it's a short eye or long eye. I'm going to hell, so <sighs> it doesn't matter. I'm just, wow. I, I don't. I hey, look. If I'm going to hell, it ain't because I call it Christology. Hey, and by the way, I I don't believe in hell either. So wait, what? Oh, yeah, I don't believe in hell. No mm. damn hell. Don't I don't know what to do with that. Not, that's okay. I uh. I don't know that I think there are good arguments for and against the idea of eternal conscious torment for, for regular people. Well, cause I think it's, I think that's actually an interesting segue, but I, I feel like there's a difference for like fallen angels versus people that just didn't accept Jesus as their savior. I don't know. I mean, well, I, don't, I, mean I don't think it's. That would mean that we have some kind of weird pre existent soul. Is that true? Hmm. Right. So, I mean, if I die, I die. Are you asking so why me? Would or... I, why would I? Are I'm asking, asking me whoever. I'm just asking. I'm asking. I know why he's asking, actually. I, that was that was a little bit of a. Uh, that was a second level question. That was a 3D question. But I mean, if I die, I die. So why would why am I, why would it be tormented forever? Well, why, it, why, so all that of a sudden gets, I'd raise up well, to get a body. So I'd be resurrected just to burn in hell? No. Well, everybody will be resurrected for judgment, right? Um, and then what? That's and but then, then it gets into whether the concept of eternal death and is about just being away from God or is it actually you know hellfire and brimstone? Right. Well, I think that's this, that's the point this, you were making, right, Brian? This, the scripture does make a. I mean, Paul does make a pretty emphatic point that. Um, the the punishment is being shut out from God's presence for eternity, right. which is the worst possible um, outcome. Period. Which is right. Which is ascent. I mean, it's it's, and there's this whole other discussion about. We have this idea about, uh, you know, you you do the right stuff. You live. You you follow the rules. You live as a Christian, and as a reward, you get eternal bliss. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't, then you get punished mm -hmm. and so people are, are trying to not be punished it's right a, it's, a, uh, it's a carrot right it's not, right not it's, a stick but it's more about it's more about consummating what you've sought all of your life it's like it's like the difference between prostitution and marriage like if you're if you're if you're courting a woman and you the honeymoon night is not the reward for a success for a successful courtship you're like you're not doing Concur. it because mm -hmm. she just wants and so just so you can get that reward that's the consummation the courtship is its own reward and it leads to this outcome but to to somebody who is cynical and doesn't understand the value of that from the outside prostitution and marriage are the same thing and in fact sometimes there are marriages that are more like prostitution or, or just hookup culture in general right, right. It doesn't have to be prostitution it's just but, swipe right but like, but with prostitution, you're you're trading unrelated. It's a quid pro quo. You're trading unrelated commodities. Like you're giving money for the act. The act is a reward for what you've paid her for. It's um, transactional, right? And to, it's not a relationship. Externally, the two things are identical, um, but they're op but they're actually opposites. The one is the one is a counterfeit and perversion of the other. The way that we tend to think about God and eternal judgment, it's it's often much more like prostitution. Like we're getting, we're being. I rewarded. thought that's where you were going. Yeah, right. I, I don't disagree with you. I, I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> yeah, that's where a it, very. You always like to use the the term scandalize. That was maybe the most scandalous thing you've ever said, and also probably the most accurate thing you've said. Uh, thanks. That was meant as a compliment. Oh, thank you. I'll take it. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of backhanded, but. No, but I'll take it. Not, not at, at all. all. Was... Not at all. You say you say a lot of scandalous shit. <laughs> I don't say anything. I I'm a. You've Never literally seen... prefaced with this might scandalize X, Y, and Z. Well, that's on that. And you though. just said that's... the most scandalous thing of all time. I said, and you didn't even preface and, it. You just rolled into it like. I'll tell you what, like, man. It's like... somebody has a problem with anything I just said. I I refer you I, to the prophet. Ezekiel. I agree with you. I agree with you. Hey, dude. Like hey, I like what you said. Anything that has a problem with anything you said, they gotta go through me. Like, that's <laughs> you, Dre. Right. Appreciate that, Dre. You got I, your own list of stuff. To... That's right. Yeah. I mean, you, you can, they yeah. can come after me for other things, but I mean, you, know, you got your own list. This, this analogy. Nah. You've got your know. own list of beefs with me. I met. 
Oh, so for sure. They gotta, they gotta get behind you. <laughs> get, in line. get in line, fool. Yeah. <laughs> the line forms <laughs> to the left, mofo. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did we solve the Trinity? Did we finally sure. do it? So yeah. we, we didn't solve it, but like, like I think we've we've moved the ball as far as we're going to yeah. move it in this format in this time frame. I I, yeah. I think you're right, and and uh, clearly I have more to do. Hey, and look! If okay. if nothing else, you got Dre to the point that Jesus was pre-existent, which is infinitely further pardon the uh the timeline pun than he was before we got into this conversation right i mean yeah i was that's a, something i was a well i was an exaltation guy at at resurrection i think i might now be a modalism guy i've got to go do some more reading <laughs> yeah. okay those were heretics bro hey they, hey there's a lot of books on them hey written it's, by it's, our church fathers it's it's the it's a different expression of something that I've been trying to to sort through. So let me go do some more reading on this, and let's come back. Let's do an episode on modalism, and, and they're, you know they're super a, fun because because we while. don't we don't know about these groups until like one of these guys brings them up, and all they do is talk shit about them. Right. So you're I like, gotta, like I, I got to go read about Sabellian and 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 I got all kinds of stuff I got to go I got to go read about. I got to figure it, out where I'm at. Ignatius right. is cool. Is it wasn't Ignatius the dude that was on his way to die and he wrote like seven letters on the way? Yeah, and, that, that's and like cool they're stuff. all they're all cool. Like I'm like, bro's about to die. Talk about get, why are you bringing this bullshit to me? I'm about to die. <laughs> so, yeah, here you go. Those Ugh. are some cool letters. Those, those yeah. are good. Uh, Eusebius kind of a dick, but he's he's good because he's early. Irenaeus is a big dick. Mm-hmm. Why is uh, wait? Why are why is he a dick? Irenaeus. What? Why? Why is he? Cause why is he? Because he because he comes off like a dick. Like I don't, I don't know what to tell mm-hmm. you, man. It's he's odd. Mean that, it's, odd it's odd that Brian doesn't understand why. Like, yeah, it is weird. Mm. It is. Why? Why is Irony come? He he writes like me. Why would you call him a dick? Like I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, are you telling us about Irenaeus or are you telling us about Dre? Oh, I don't. Maybe I don't like people like Irenaeus. Mm. Well, but are are we learning about anything new about Irenaeus, or are we learning about Dre's attitude toward Irenaeus? That's well, the question. Well, since since we don't have Irenaeus here, nor any of his work pulled up so that we can read it, we are definitely learning about me and my feelings <laughs> on Irenaeus. But if you read the Good Bishop of Leon, I think a lot of people might agree with me. I appreciate and that's that. Okay. You, I appreciate that you did the the French the the proper French pronunciation. Well, you know, I live in Southern California, so whenever yeah. you know we talk, I'm like, "Hey, I'm gonna go out for a quesadilla." You know, I'm not, I don't, <laughs> I don't actually say any word until it's in Spanish, and then and then I pronounce <laughs> it that way. To this day, I cannot order a quesadilla at a restaurant without asking for a dang quesadilla. Well, okay, Napoleon, Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, Mormon. Uh, <laughs> Napoleon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the big BYU project. Did you guys um, to? To uh, speaking of Mormons, um, I'm just kidding. That was a totally uh, forced <laughs> yeah, segue. Yeah, um, did you guys follow that whole Max Miller uh, GOP out of uh, Ohio yes. thing Mm-mm. about the? Yes. Uh, and he was he had, Jew. Yeah. So be what, careful what you say, Brian. What happened? I don't. I don't, you, I don't know what you're talking about. So, so somebody that worked for a Right to Life, uh, she she posted a tweet. Talk. I, I don't remember the exact wording, but it, it was basically like, "Hey, through Jesus Christ," and she, she said, "There's no hope apart from Christ as Savior." There you go. Um, oh, and then so Miller told to Miller take it down back. or something. Yeah, well, told her she was a bigot for saying that, and that. He what does her. bigot mean? <laughs> well, it means that how how dare you? There's other people with other religions, and you're just going to bring up that only your religion is the way. That's how religions work. That, that's what I thought. I mean, all that, religions work that way. I, I bring this up because it's such a widespread thing that it it my blood boils every time I somebody does that. You think you're a bigot because you think only your religion is correct. I, um, I expect someone to say that if they're pious. If you don't, it's not do. a very good religion. Right. If you don't think your religion is correct and everybody else is wrong, you need a new damn religion. Like, what are you doing? What are you even doing? But the person who says that is the ultimate bigot. I agree. They're basically saying that 
Well, why would that be bigoted to th- for me to think my religion is cor- is is correct? Is true? Um, well, well, because you think everyone else is wrong, Brian. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but for that to be bigoted, though, it would have to be true that all religions are equally valid, right? Right. Right. And Which, also, I don't I don't understand why he saw a tweet unsolicited and just replied to it like that shot it out to everybody to call to call her bigoted like, what, i don't i think there's what there's a doing? i think there was a history there that it sounds that like there was there was something personal going on i because suspect she was fired also. i don't i don't know the guy but yeah, i suspect I this that. was this was some virtue signaling to moderates like look at me i'm one of the good republicans i'm not I'm I'm not one of these religious extremists who actually believes their religion, but um, but for for that to be bigoted, all religions would have to be equally valid, which means that no religion has any validity. Well, which means that's that's true. But I I, I kind of I hearken to was it it was uh, Pendulette, who is an atheist, mm-hmm. but said if you really believe in a religion and you're not trying to convert me, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, yes. how much do you have to hate? He, he was somebody? talking about his Christian friend, right? Who right. didn't try to evangelize to him, and he was right. pissed. He's like, he's like, so, if so you, you really you think I'm to going to hell, hell? Why would you not want me to not go to hell? Do you are you not right. my friend? Like right. that's so weird. Marion Webster defines the number one definition of religion: a personal set or institutionalized system of religious attitudes, beliefs, and practices. And if you deconstruct that sentence, like you have to believe that your religion is the only version of the religion i think that's anybody that's been listening to us max miller thinks that too though he thinks that about his own religion which is this sort of general agnostic clearly he doesn't well but but hear me out here hear me out for that to be bigoted for him to be take exception to somebody believing their religion to be the true one our religions would have to be equally valid, which means none of them are valid. Right. They're if all, they're all they're valid, all, then are valid because they're that's, all that's they're impossible. all just B, BS people made up. I agree. And and so this kind of this kind of general agnosticism and sneering rejection of religion, that's basically his religion. That's his religious outlook. Which is a religious. Right. But it's still that's still a worldview. That's you, still a it's a worldview, but it's not a religion. You can't have a religion that's a religious, right? Like Sure that's, can. That's he, that's this is his well, view of reality. Asexual is, is a sexuality. This, this is this is his view of what religion is and, and what reality is, and that and he and he's basically imposing it on everybody else, saying if you don't think like me and agree that our religions are are you're equally a big invalid, you're a bad person. And I, so he's. I, I would he's actually go the other way. That. I would say if you're religious, <clears throat> but you believe that other religions are accurate. You're an idiot. Right. Yeah. Which might well, be worse than being a bigot. <laughs> but nobody, but I mean, I, I don't think that, I don't think anybody really believes that. I think they just, they just, they don't want to be, don't, they don't want to be a bigot. They're more worried they, about being a bigot well, than being who accurate. in right to life isn't Christian. Yeah. But I like, think the I person think everybody who says in that, that organization would probably like heart that tweet. That's an interesting, that's an interesting question. So let's think about that. Is it possible to be pro-life and be atheist? I think so. I think so. I too. think so, yeah. I think so too. But they tend not to tend not to. But I think I it's mean, possible, right? As a matter of abstract principle, they might agree that yeah, there are supposedly wrong. There are it's supposedly also a Christian organization. But I, I get it. But my yeah. point is that there's supposedly Christians that are pro-choice, aka Democrats. Right. Well, there's there's a whole not the Pope came out and said it's impossible, right? But there are a lot of self-avowed Christians that say they're pro-choice. That, that well, exists. They, that, they that's a thing. Whether whether right. you, the three of us agree or our listeners agree, I mean, th- those people do exist on planet Earth. It's an interesting concept. There's also people that supposedly believe in freedom that aren't pro Second Amendment. I think there's a. Uh, there are. There, there are liars. I, no, they're not. They're no, also they're, they're also idiots, right? But like that's a whole different thing. 
Our culture. Dre, Dre, those trees are swinging behind you, brother. Are they? Is the storm yeah, coming in? Yeah. Where's your hurricane going, man? Look over your shoulder, man. Those, those oh, trees hell are yeah, finally. It's about time. Oh. This might be the last time y'all hear from Andre Bibbs. <laughs> nah, it's, it's, it's called Hillary. She can't do anything right. She can hurricane hey, about as well hey, as she can be a secretary of she state can run yeah, an embassy. The, 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 what was it? The Onion or the one of those websites i forget who it was they said that all of the deaths that are attributed to uh, hurricane hillary will be considered suicides <laughs> <laughs> what does california have on the clintons right right i don't know what i did to the clintons but uh, but here yeah. here they here she comes i mean right? please she's she's about as good as a hurricane as running for president that's all i'm saying like get out of here wow you suck at protecting embassies and running for president. That's how good you're and destroying is. coastlines. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm cons- I voted Republican, so I destroyed the coastline already. It is my you, fault. How dare you? I I know. I, I guess know. I guess we made that volcano go off last year too. We we did. It's funny that that's not even mentioned. Like, um, hello. All the global warming the that biggest comes from that greenhouse and everything. Yeah. gas. Yeah. Known to man. I'm yeah. so mad about that. I, I, so like it just have you guys watched the movie? What is it like called? 65 or whatever. 65 With million. The one Kylo Ren. Driver. Yeah. I, I mean, have I, haven't, I, haven't watched I just it. watched I it the other day. It was pretty cool. Uh-huh. I mean, I say pretty cool. It was all right. It was all right. But it, it was fun. I watched I finished season nine day. of Suits. Did you, did I am you, done you, with the you've, series. You've now. already passed me. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I'm done, and I don't know what to do with my life now. It's over. It's over. I thought there's like 14 seasons. There's nine. Oh, okay. Don't tell. Don't yeah. talk to me then. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I recently. I'm, it's 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 like the date with my wife, and, then, and now now we're not friends again. I don't know. What we're <laughs> Gotta find a new show. <laughs> <laughs> Billions recently, is back uh, on. Well, I, actually, I think uh, it was funny because I I had mentioned it. I had, like incepted her. And then also, you know, I heard that uh, that Billions is a good show. I'm like, yeah, you're. Have y'all you not watched it? No, we have not watched. We have oh, started, so I don't think Delani will enjoy it, but I think if you can get her into it, she'll get sucked in. You might, you might be surprised. I might be. I would love yeah. to be. In fact, if Delani watches Billions and likes it, that changes everything about Delani and me. It changes the calculus of your, it does. of your relationship. It does, one hundred percent. Okay, and then and then we'll have to compare what character she likes the best. That's yeah, hundred percent. Right. And if uh, it's she... Wags, I fall out of my chair and I don't know what to do. Okay, fair. Like, fair with. It can't be. I think we're gonna watch Lioness tonight. That's a okay. The movie because or the series? The series. Okay. So because this hurricane thing, I don't have to be in until ten tomorrow. That's nice. what's up. I know. So just blow. Just keep blowing. Right, Hill- blow, blow, Seminole. They should have named it Monica because that's the one that actually blew. So I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Yeah, I, uh... just smile. If you know, you know. I mean, yeah, it's, like, it's not really, it's not really a secret. Man. It was pretty overt. It was pretty overt. <laughs> What's he talking about? Who's Monica? Thanks for listening to Mount Hermeneutics. We hope you enjoyed the show, and maybe even took something away to think about. Be sure to send us feedback, both positive and negative. Like and subscribe on all the socials and tell your friends. Until next time.